We've been saying that the Acolyte is trash since its premiere, even though the premise sounds pretty cool when we first heard about the show. But now that the shills can't even defend the series. It's got a 14% on Rotten Tomatoes, and now we know it has over a 31% decrease in viewership in just one week. And it's so funny, man, many of the fans who loved the show in the beginning have turned on Star Wars, have turned on Lucasfilm, and now they're lashing out because they feel betrayed and lied to. This is crazy. You guys remember when the Acolyte was first announced and promoted by Lucasfilm? Details were relatively sparse. However, it was described as a new Star Wars series set in the High Republic. You know, everybody's excited about the High Republic. <laughs> Focusing on the emergence of a dark side power and the Sith. Lucasfilm went on to describe the show as a mystery thriller that would explore the galaxy's secrets and the dark secrets of the Force. Focusing on the emergence of dark side powers. Focusing on the emergence of the Sith. Focusing on the secrets of the Force. And as none of those things have happened because that's not what the show is about. The show is literally about two surviving space witches who happen to be twins. And the coven in which they came from had no men. And now even the shields are crying out to Lucasfilm, giving them the power of two. You can't make this stuff up, guys. 14%. The audience score, uh, you know, is going back and forth between 13 and 14%. The critical score still sitting at 83. It's dropped. Remember when it was like 94, 93? They literally had this thing rated as high as Star Wars. And, and, and I want to say this. 14%. Can you name anything in the world that you've ever watched that has a 14%... On Rotten Tomatoes, that's good. That was a rhetorical question. And now even the people who were shilling, excited, consume everything Disney Star Wars, now they're disappointed. They're lashing out on Twitter. I think what upsets me at the core for the Acolyte is this story really isn't about the Sith. It's about twins caught up in the Jedi versus Sith and the mystery of their past. I wanted Sith training, Sith lore, exploration of the Sith. Instead, I got more space witches. And the thing is, I'm not poking fun at this person. I literally feel bad for them. <laughs> I really do, man. They were like, yes, we're going to get some deep Sith lore. This is the beginning of it all. Oh, this is going to be so amazing. Mm-mm. Not happening. Respectfully, you should have known that you weren't going to get deep Sith lore when Leslie Headland went on record saying, I don't want anybody that has expertise in Star Wars to help me write this series. Because that's not what this series is about. I'm telling a Leslie Headland story, not a Star Wars story. Good job, Star Wars. And that's exactly why there is a 31% decrease in viewership. And that's minimum. 31% minimum. IMDb just reported today. Following the release of Episode 5, The Acolyte saw a modest improvement in audience ratings, gaining one point on Rotten Tomatoes. Modest and a slight boost in its IMDb score. However, this wasn't enough to attract the key metric, viewers. According to Variety's Luminate data, the show experienced a 31% drop in minutes watched between June 13th and June 20th. And it's only going to get worse from here, folks. We're just now over halfway through the series. We're just now past episode five. There's only three episodes left. And people literally thought that this show was about the Sith and about the emergence of dark side users and dark force powers. It's not. And the people who have been shilling and defending and lashing out at us for not liking the show. We've been critical of the show because this is trash Star Wars. And it's so funny that there's just a few people on social media who are Star Wars content creators, or they run podcasts or whatever, and or they got a big social media presence. They have been attacking the fandom like nonstop, calling us all of the words, okay, that, that none of us are those things. And now these people have began to eat each other. Now there's infighting. They hate each other. They're not speaking anymore. You literally cannot make this up. I got to shout out our friend, the great drunk 3PO, Jay made a, a terrific expose on this entire ordeal about how the shills, the people who were attacking us, attacking Star Wars theory, attacking Star Wars content creators, one of those guys has personally attacked us, personally attacked me just for giving facts. It's ridiculous how these people act. 
talk about hate. Well, anyways, Jay made this video here that you see at the top. Uh, Star Wars Theories Accuser Exposed Along With Others. The Acolyte Backlash is getting... Jay, your, your titles are too long, man. Uh, getting cringe. Oh, he's right. That is a terrific video. I, I actually got to gotta say bravo, Jay. Bravo. That's the best Star Wars video I have seen since the Acolyte dropped. That's it. If you want to know about the state of the Star Wars fandom and the Acolyte and the fallout and, and the craziness and cringe of the people who actually liked the series, go watch that video. And it gets even crazier because now the media can no longer defend the show. Now the media are saying it's not being review bombed, guys. The show sucks. And I'm not talking about some little right-wing conservative media. I'm talking about people who have been on the attack as well, like Forbes. Forbes just released this article today, and they even talk about the fandom menace. Funny how people still talk about the fandom menace and people who were supposedly in the fandom menace, like us. Nobody even mentions it. Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers, we're not fandom menace, we're Geeks and Gamers. You know, uh, we, we left that fandom menace thing a long time ago, but I guess they cling on to it. It says, even on IMDb, the audience score reflects a growing disenchantment with Star Wars, where the Acolyte has a meager 3.3 out of 10. Does it deserve this low of a score or a 13% user score on Rotten Tomatoes? They say probably not. I rate it somewhere around the same quality as Boba Fett or Obi-Wan. Quite poorly, in other words, but not necessarily any worse. The Acolyte is so bad, it makes the Book of Boba Fett look like Casablanca. But here's where Forbes gets it right. This is not necessarily a reflection of the Acolyte's quality in a vacuum, however. This is the result of years of growing apathy and dismay. The super low scores following a flood of reviews on Rotten Tomatoes is referred to as review bombing, and that's a fair description, but I think review bombing has a place in modern online culture. I don't believe it's entirely trolls giving the show bad reviews. I don't think it's just a bunch of racist and sexist either. Sure, they are they are those that who are those things that are out there and they certainly make their unpleasant views known. Nor do I think we should simply write off these reviews as dishonest or politically motivated. For many of us, there is simply a sense that the Star Wars we know and love and have loved for decades since we were but young Padawans has been utterly changed for the worse by people who don't understand or appreciate what made this franchise great to begin with. Bravo, Forbes. Bravo. Even the media is drilling Leslie Headland and Kathleen Kennedy and Star Wars and everything that they represent now. This is fantastic. Even more media fallout. Yesterday, Wired.com writes the article, The Acolyte and the Long-Awaited Death of Review Bombing. Leslie Headland's new Star Wars show is getting positive reviews from critics and being trashed by audiences. Some are calling it review bombing, but it's more complicated than that. The article quotes... Another ball-capped person noted the main reason why this show is such a debacle is because it doesn't feel like Star Wars. Fans like me, longtime fans like us, we're not buying this crap. This is garbage, and we got to call them out for it. Sounds like a pretty smart guy. It was me. But the main premise of the article is right here. Sometimes franchises have bad installments, or just installments n not everyone enjoys, and that's fine. Nobody is defending this show anymore. And isn't it funny that Leslie Headland was just asked by Entertainment Weekly to give an update about season two? You could just sense in the interview, Leslie goes, hey, can you ask me something about season two? I need to try to save face. Sure, we'll ask you about season two. Uh, hey, Leslie, any plans for season two? Oh, I'm so glad that you asked that. Yes, season two is not happening. But they run the article and actually have it as the headline there. The Acolyte creator, Leslie Headland talks about possible season two. Uh, no, Leslie, definitely not going to happen. And ironically enough, her quote is so funny. It feels like everyone's really expecting to get a second season, and I don't feel that's a good idea. Well, Leslie, for the first time, the fandom agrees. Take a bow, Kathy. Take a bow, Leslie. You have created the worst Star Wars ever made. Only three weeks left. It can only get worse from here. Thanks for watching this video. We are You Are Echo Base Network. May the force be with you. See you on the next one.